SpaceX seems to have successfully fired up a Starship and a super heavy booster hours apart, testing a total of three new Raptor 2 engines on the two rockets. SpaceX says it has finished a static fire with two engines on Starship 24. This happened less than three hours after the company successfully fired up a Raptor 2 engine for the first time in a rocket prototype. Wanna know more about it? Then stay tuned till the end of the video. Welcome to Tecmo. In today's video, we will talk about the first time SpaceX fired Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7. SpaceX brought their huge Super Heavy Booster 7 back to the launch pad a few days ago. Reports say that the Booster 7 prototype was moved to Starbase's orbital launch pad at night on Friday, August the 5th, so that it could be tested. And on August the 8th, SpaceX began to test both Booster 7 and Ship 24. Saturday, August the 6th, Elon Musk tweeted from Starbase about the arrival of Booster 7 as well. He put up two pictures. The first one shows B7 heading toward the launch pad. He wrote, moving rocket to launch pad. After B7 got to the launch pad, Musk posted a picture of it next to the orbital launch tower with the caption, at launch pad. Just a few days ago, Musk talked about how he saw the first Starship orbital launch going and what he thought would happen. He wrote, a successful orbital flight will probably happen between 1 and 12 months from now. So it seems likely that SpaceX is working hard and quickly to get Booster 7 and its Starship upper stage spacecraft ready for the program's first ever orbital test flight, which the company hopes to launch in the next few months. SpaceX's goal right now is to get Starship into orbit as soon as possible, preferably within a month and no later than a year. According to the first plan, the launch will happen by September of 2022. And for SpaceX to reach this goal, the ship, the ship and Super Heavy will need to be fully tested and confirmed by the end of August. If we go with the second prediction, the first Starship launch into orbit will be delayed by a year. Still, if the SpaceX team decides to stop using B7 and launch with Booster 8, they might be able to do so in four to six months. Keeping in mind the one month goal, SpaceX has started testing both Ship 24 and Booster 7. On August the 8th, they did two spin prime tests on Ship 24, then let out a lot of air. And then they did two spin prime tests on Super Heavy Booster 7, then let out air from the booster. And on August 9th, they tested the dual static fires on Ship 24 and Booster 7. The test's goals have not been confirmed by the government. Musk didn't say exactly what he means by success for Starship's launch into space. Sources say that Starship might be able to do it if success means getting to orbit or putting a few next-generation Starlink satellites in orbit. But if success means catching a super heavy booster and Starship surviving its first orbital re-entry, the chances of success are very low right now. In our next update, Northrop Grumman buys three launches from SpaceX for their Cygnus spacecraft. Northrop Grumman and SpaceX just signed a contract to launch three Cygnus cargo missions to the International Space Station. Sources say that this contract with SpaceX came up while Northrop was working with Firefly Aerospace to improve their main rocket, the Antars. A Northrop Grumman employee named Ellen Klicka said this about the launch contract with SpaceX. The launches will happen in late 2023 and 2024 from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to support the NG-20, NG-21, and NG-22 CRS missions. On August 8th, Northrop Grumman and Firefly Aerospace made the announcement that they will collaborate in the production of a new first stage for Northrop Grumman's Antars launch vehicle, as well as a medium lift rocket in the not too distant future. Before, the Jusnoi State Design Office in the Yushmash Machine Building Plant in Ukraine were responsible for manufacturing the initial stage of the Antars spacecraft. The initial stages of the rocket were propelled by RD-181 engines manufactured by Russia's NPO Energomash. However, as a result of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, production of the Antars rocket has slowed down. This is due to the fact that Russia has cut off supplies of the engines and other parts that are necessary to produce these rockets. This was a response to sanctions imposed by the West as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which caused those sanctions to be imposed. A report stated that the preliminary preparations for two additional Antars launches had already been finished by Northrop. The first one is going to take place in October. 
However, they were also putting together contingency plans in case the war rendered either the first stage or the engines unavailable. Because of this, the partnership with Firefly was able to be formed. Antars 330 is the name given to the improved model that Northrop and Firefly are in process of developing. According to various sources, the first stage of the Antars 330 will be comprised of seven Miranda engines, which are currently being manufactured by Firefly. In this stage, Firefly composites will also be used to construct the building as well as the tanks. The upper stage of the Antars 330 rocket will be identical to the one found on the current Antars rocket. The launch pad at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Virginia is where Antars 330 is scheduled to take off from. In the past, cargo ships known as Cygnus were carried to the International Space Station by rockets belonging to the Antars program. However, as a result of the conflict that has been going on between Russia and Ukraine, Russia has ceased sending supplies. Because of this, it is difficult to determine whether or not Antars will be able to launch. Therefore, Antars 330 will serve as the launch vehicle for Cygnus. However, according to Scott Day of Northrop Grumman, it will take nearly two years to get Antars 330 ready for launch into space. This indicates that it won't be available until 2024 at the earliest. As a result, Northrop awarded SpaceX three launch contracts for Falcon 9 rockets so that the gap in time between the most recent Antars launch and the first Antars 330 launch could be filled. Because of this, Cygnus cargo deliveries to the space station continued without interruption. The payload capacity of the vehicle will reportedly significantly increase with the introduction of the Antars 330 rocket in comparison to the Antars rocket that is currently in operation. Day explained that the current Antars has the capability of delivering payload into the insertion orbit meant for space station missions that is 8100 kilograms. However, the upgraded Antars launcher will have the capability of delivering almost 10,500 kilograms to the same orbit. Both Northrop Grumman and Firefly Aerospace remain tight-lipped about the entirely new medium-lift launcher they are developing together. It is common knowledge that SpaceX conducted astronaut training in preparation for the Polaris Dawn mission. Since then, SpaceX has made significant strides forward. During the month of May, teams from SpaceX trained the astronauts to participate in the first ever commercial spacewalk. In addition, the most recent information suggests that the initial launch of the Polaris Dawn program will occur in the month of December of 2022 aboard a spacecraft manufactured by SpaceX called the Crew Dragon. During an air show, the person in charge of this program, Jared Isaacman, stated, We're looking at the end of the year right now, so likely December. Polaris Dawn has more to contribute in terms of his objectives. In addition to performing a spacewalk from the SpaceX Dragon capsule, as part of a private mission, the first launch aims to send the crew to an altitude of 1,400 kilometers and carry out trial communications with SpaceX's Starlink. Both of these objectives will be accomplished in the course of the mission. Another member of the Polaris Dawn crew, Anna Menon of SpaceX, stated, There is a tone of new development that's happening to support that. The development of the suit that is currently taking place for this mission is really going to help us learn. And we will be able to build on this as we go to the moon and eventually as we go to Mars. Isaac Mann came to the conclusion that in order to arrive at our destination, we will make it a priority to gain a significant amount of knowledge along the way. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you will always be notified.